Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you so much, uh, beloved sister in the Lord. More grace in Jesus' name. Amen. A very, very warm welcome to all our wonderful youths tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for all of you. We want to thank God for the grace that is upon your lives. And um, I just want to pray for the strength of God upon you tonight. I pray that the Lord will fill you with might in your spirit in the name of Jesus. As you have come to pray, the Lord will fill you up. The Lord will fill your cup. The Lord will answer you. The Lord will clarify you. The Lord will strengthen you and help you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the word you hear tonight, uh, this truth uh, will be rich in you with wisdom and the word will be pre preserving you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ until heaven, until you make heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. You are warmly welcome in Jesus name. I want to thank God for the leaders uh, of the youth ministry. Pastor Cliff, God bless you. More grace unto you and the team in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not lose your reward for the wonderful work you're doing in North America chapter youth ministry in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank God for this invitation. I pray that the Lord will use it to glorify himself in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory, honor, power, and majesty belong to God. Amen. Amen. Glory, honor, power, and majesty. Belong to God. Amen. Heavenly Father, glory, honor, power, and majesty belongs to you. Thank you, King of Glory, that you are our Father. You're not ashamed or afraid to be our father, to identify with us. We are grateful that you call us beloved and your own. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence one more time. Your children have come. The young ones have come. They have come to learn from you. They have come to understand more of your ways. I pray, King of Glory, that you will teach every single one of them tonight. You will give them a word that is in season, a word that will help them in spirit, a word that will help them in their soul, a word, oh God, that will transform and renew them. Father, I pray that you will keep them. Set a watch over them, my Lord and my God, and keep them unto the very end. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I would like to talk to us tonight on this topic. Individuality in the end time individuality in the end time. It is very, very important that we become aware that we are in the end time. We are in the last days. This is the last hour that we are in. And we're in the period that is more like minutes now. Hallelujah. It is very, very important that we are aware that's where we are. Um, this is the moment where Christ, who is the owner of our souls, 
will come to take the church away. Will come to take the bride of Christ. This is a period that is marked with many signs. The Bible tells us in uh, Matthew 24, there are varied signs that we will see that we can tell that Christ is on the horizon. Something is about to happen. So it's about time it, that we wake up spiritually and recognize the moment we are in as young people. Hallelujah. So even you yourselves, you can see some things around you that become so questionable because they're so strange. Even you yourself can see that. Some things are happening and it tells that we're in a very remarkable time. It's a very significant time that we are in. Even Matthew 24 talks about wars and rumors of war. What is on the horizon right now? Isn't it war and rumors of war? So we are in a very, very crucial period. Many things are happening. And we have to be conscious that it is the time that we have to make an individual decision. Individuality in the end time. You have to make a choice concerning what is going on around you, what you, what, you know, what the experiences are. You have to make some choice. How will you deal with this period now? Totally depends on you. That's why individuality is necessary. You have to know who you are as an individual. You have to know who you serve. You have to know where you want to spend eternity. Dalirica wrote a book and I believe we all know it. Um, it says the keys of your life is in your hands. The choice is yours. Who will you follow or what will you follow? Who will you serve? I've said it. Who will lead you? So to be successful in this end time, to overcome in this end time, to be victorious, there are certain things that we have to do. There are certain behaviors <clears throat> and certain attitudes that we have to develop. Individuality. We're not doing these things because others are doing it. We're doing it because we know that we have to do these things for our soul's sake. Individuality in this end time. You have to do some things that maybe no one else is doing. You've got to know that you've got to do it. And uh, I'm going to take an example. We know this example very, very well from the book of Daniel. So we turn to Daniel chapter one, verse eight. We know it very, very well. Daniel chapter one, verse eight. And it says, but Daniel, purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not 
defied himself. Not that he purposed in his heart and he left it there, but he took action. He did something about it because he was determined not to spoil himself. himself. No, when the Bible tells us that Daniel purposed in his heart, that is what we call individuality. The Bible says that Daniel purposed in his heart. It did not say Daniel and his friends purposed in their heart. Do you understand? Daniel made a decision and Daniel acted on it. He stood by it. Not him and his friends. He purposed in his heart. I'm sure you have seen individuality now. That's what we're talking about. We know that this intention that Daniel had, this firmness that Daniel had, this resoluteness, that Daniel had in his heart. When he made up his mind for righteousness and holiness, he stood by it. He was totally resolute in his own mind. Nothing could move him. Nothing could shake him. Nothing could deter him. He was determined. And we know this story. It is this decision that he has made that delivered him from the mouths of the lion. Is this decision that he has made that caused him to be victorious? Is this Decision that he has made that gave him testimonies that caused a lot of changes in the society because of that decision that he made. So youths, there's a decision that you have to make. It's an individual decision. You have to be resolute. You have to be firm. Because that is what's going to deliver you from hellfire. That's what's going to deliver you from, 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 from damnation. That's what's going to save your soul from hell. You have to make it. Your family cannot make it for you. Your friends cannot make it for you. It's an individual decision. You have to make up your mind and purpose in your heart that you will not defile yourself. You will not walk in unrighteousness or uncleanness. You will not go spotting yourself and polluting yourself with the world. You have to make that decision yourself. The preacher can preach. The teacher can teach. Your coordinator, your leader, Pastor Cliff, can talk and talk and talk. But if you don't make that decision for yourself, uh, you will find yourself going down to destruction. But you have to make the decision for yourself for the saving of your soul. Individuality. The Bible tells us in Romans 12, Romans 12, we know these passages, they're not strange to us, but it's here for wonderful reminders. Romans 12, one to two. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I beseech you therefore, youths. I beseech you therefore, put your name there. 
Paul is talking to you. The Lord is speaking to you. The Lord is pleading with you. Make up your mind. It's by the renewing of your mind. You've got to purpose in your mind. You have to be determined in your mind. You have to make that decision. Individuality is utmost important. It is absolutely necessary. It is imperative. I'm going to look at another passage, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Turn your Bibles there. Matthew 10, verse 37. The Bible says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. It is not telling us that we should not love our parents. This verse is not telling us that we should not obey our parents or vice versa, we should not love our children. That's not what it is saying. It doesn't mean that you should not love your family or care about them. That's not what it means. In fact, we are commanded to obey our parents because it is spiritually beneficial. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, but this is right, Ephesians chapter 6. There are spiritual rewards that your days may be long upon the land that the Lord that God has given thee. It is spiritually beneficial. So let's understand what this passage is talking about as it deals with individuality in this end time. Hallelujah. Even our Father in the Lord on Sunday past he gave us this message, and it is instruction to children. It's commandment, God's commandments to children. I was so loving this message. Oh, my God. I was telling my children in the background. I said, this is the message to children of this generation. This is a timely message. Every child needs to hear this message. Every single child that is born upon the earth and have life and breath, they need to hear this message because this message can save their soul. They've got to understand some things, some prerogatives. They've got to understand that or else they will be damned. Powerful message. Every single youth must make sure you listen to it again and again and again and do as you are instructed to do and you will save your soul. It's an individual choice. Mommy Heather has said it now, and now it's up to you. Will you go back and listen to it again and again? It's totally up to you. It's individuality. Hallelujah. And I pray that as you go back and hear it over and again and again, the Lord will use that message to mold you. The Lord will use that message to make you over. The Lord will use that message to renew and transform you in the mighty name of Jesus and get you ready for heaven because you're in the right mind with the right attitude, the right character. So what is this verse talking about then? God wants us to understand that we have to ensure that we make a decision to follow him and his word over that of our parents if our parents are not speaking the word of God. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. If you take your father's word and it's not the word of God, you're not worthy of him. If you take your mother's word and you, the mother's word is not the word of God, the holy words of God, you're not worthy of him. So as long as you know the truth, you walk by the truth. 
And it's not just your mother or your father now. We're talking about leaders, teachers, anybody, governments, anywhere they are, teachers, whoever they are, whether you read it in a book or you watch it on telly, whoever is speaking to you, whoever is speaking to your mind, if you take their idea over God and it's not the word of God, you are not, heaven will not be your portion. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that we will be wise and we will take godly counsel so we will save our souls in the name of Jesus. So we will stand firm on the word of God individuality what does individuality mean again when the bible says that i come to put a sword there i didn't come to put peace in the family that is when now you are making a decision which is against your parents or your family members because they are not saying the word of god they are not um um, they are not practicing the holy standards of God, or they are they are not even believers themselves. What if your mother or your father would say to you that um, uh, my family, we are going to turn to Islam? What will you do? Ah, this is the last day that we are Christian. We are becoming Muslims today. What will you do? Do you understand what I'm saying? Individuality individuality you have to make a decision for the truth you have to make a decision for christ that's why the bible says that you are not worthy of him hallelujah if you make a decision for muhammad over christ you are not worthy of him so you've got to understand what the Bible talks about when he says you've got to anybody that love father or mother more than him so you have to make a decision what do you love more than christ same situation. Do you love your movies and things like that more than Christ? You love your mobile phone more than Christ? It's the same thing. You're not worthy of him. You have to make an individual decision. Who are you following? Who do you want? Where are you going? Where do you want to spend your eternity? You have to make that individual decision. Individu individuality in this end time. It means by yourself. Hallelujah. It means by yourself. It means uh, that you don't need your mother or your father or the pastor always telling you. That's what it means. It means that you don't need anybody breathing down your back to always tell you, go read your Bible, go pray, go fast, uh, put away the phone, uh, and do your assignment. You don't need that because you're standing on your individual choice to work and follow righteousness all the days of your life. Uh, you have made that choice. You don't need anybody to push you and prompt you. You have made that individual decision. Hallelujah. If any of these persons that I've just mentioned are priority in your life, the Bible says you can't be his disciples. You can't be his disciples. You have to learn to make that decision for righteousness. Though young you are, whatever age you are, you have to know how to stand for Christ in this time that we're living in. Your friends may not be doing it the way you've been taught in this holiness ministry. Mm, they may not understand what you're doing, but you have to make sure you stand. They may mock, laugh, scoff. They may criticize. They may, you know, revile you, say whatever they want to say about you, but you have to make your mind up that you're going to stand regardless of how they treat you or respond to you and the choice that you have made. Yes, your skirt may be longer than all of your friends around in the, in the or your classmates or those around you in your community, but you have to make a decision. Everybody's wearing long nails and their hair is all fake, but you have made a decision to cover your head. They don't understand it, but that's all right. That's okay. You have to make a decision and you have to make your mind up to stand. Hallelujah. It's individuality in this end time. That's what we're talking about. It's very, very important. There are characteristics that you have to develop just like um, Daniel did. He was strong. He was confident. He was bold. He was a bold speaker. He didn't care what any 
professed great man would want to do. He didn't care. Throw me in the fire if that's what it is. Mm, me, I will not defile myself. Mm, no way. He was ready to face the consequence of that decision. But defilement, it was not coming to his mind. It was not happening. You have to make a decision. Daniel was a man of prayer. The, the, the songwriter says, maybe some of us know the song. Daily he prayed three times. Even when they cast him out in the den of lion, he was still down there praying. Ah, they say they make decree and law, nobody pray. And he went to the window and he, 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 he it's like he made a loudspeaker that he decided, oh, do whatever you want to do. Me, I have to pray. That is a, a mindset that I have. That one cannot change. Cannot change. He was resolute. And so young people, that's what we're talking about. You have to make up your mind to be resolute and pray. Pray as Daniel prayed. You will get the victories that Daniel got. Hallelujah. You will get the outcomes and testimonies that Daniel had. The miracles that happen in Daniel's life will come to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will reveal himself to you. The Lord will give you favor because you stand for righteousness and you stand for holiness. It's not because you're, uh, um, you're intellectual or you're smart or you can do degrees. Or, no, that's not what uh, uh, the qualification is. It's righteousness. It's holiness. Remember that when Daniel and his friends made up their mind to do what they had to do, not to spoil themselves, the Bible says they became 10 times smarter, 10 times better than every one of their peers around them. It is not intellectual that is doing it. It is righteousness and holiness. You have to make up your mind not to define yourself. Characteristics of prayer. Make up your mind to pray. You have to learn to pray. Thank God for Daniel. Daniel says, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. You know God in prayer. And when you know God in prayer, you will be strong and you also will do exploits. You have to learn to pray because prayer is essential for your individuality in this end time. If you're going to be saved, you have to pray. The Bible says pray that you will not fall into temptation. You have to pray in this end time. Individual. Your friends are not praying. They are doing something else. But you know you have to pray. You cannot live without being prayed because your life will not be successful outside of prayer. It's an individual decision. Start somewhere. 10 minutes will soon become 15. 15 will soon become 20. 20 will soon become half an hour. And before you know it, you're praying for one, one hour. Before you know it, you're praying for two hours. Before you're doing, knowing you're doing night vigil by yourself. You have to learn to pray. Talk to God from your heart. Desire praying. Desire. And when you desire to pray, the Holy Spirit will teach you. That's what he says in Romans 8. Because we don't know really how to pray. But the Holy Ghost helps us. With groanings that cannot be uttered because these are infirmities. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us. So ask the Holy Ghost. Desire. And before you long, you will be strong. Before long, you will be prayerful. Worship the Lord. You have to learn to resist the enemy through prayer. You have to learn to wage warfare in the spiritual realm through prayer. You have to learn to cast down every imagination that is coming to your mind through prayer. Hallelujah. Because this is how you're going to break free from demonic bondages that are there to harass your soul and bring you down to hell. You have to learn to pray. It's an individual decision. Use the prayerful weapons. Prayer is one of them. Hallelujah. Know God. Search him out. Believe what God is saying about you. Align yourself with the will of God and do what God is asking you to do as an individual. And then you will see the power of God manifesting in your life. There are chains and ties uh, that are the enemy has designed to hold you bound. And some of us, we struggle. Young people, you struggle in prayer. It's like when it's time for prayer, you become so tired. You become so lazy. You become sleepy. 
another excuse and another excuse and another reason why. And we get carried away with our reasons and then we become so weak in our spiritual lives. But if you pray more and fight in this battle of prayer as an individual and push until something happens, the Lord will strengthen you and Satan's grip will be broken from your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You just need to learn to pray. You just need to learn to pray. All those monitoring and um, influencing spirits that are, 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 are lurking and uh, trying to harass you and trying to distract you, those powers will be broken when you pray. Hallelujah. So learn to pray. It's an individual decision. And I pray that you will learn to fast too. Learn to fast in this end time. Individuality for this end time. You have to learn to fast because some things will not happen and change until you fast. The Bible says uh, that these kinds go not out except by prayer and fasting. So you have to learn how to um, uh, accompany your prayer with fasting. Set aside certain uh, times uh, for, for fasting, certain days for fasting. You have to make that individual decision. If Pastor Cliff doesn't tell you that it's time to fast or your leaders don't tell you it's time to fast, you've got to know that you're setting aside valuable time because of your soul's sake because you want you want strength uh, because you want uh, 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 to be victorious in the end because you want Christ to stand by you because you don't want to go to hell you have to pray you have to fast you have to seek the face of the lord even jesus christ did it and he was god he fasted 40 days 40 nights and he is god so what what does god why does god have to fast but he did just to show us the example that in human state, we must do it. So please be obedient and learn to fast in this end time as an individual. Hallelujah. Don't let our body take over. The body must die. The flesh must die. Food and sleep and pleasure takes over. No, we as an individual, we have to make decisions that these things will not control us. Hallelujah. Just for our soul's sake. And we must also develop to love the word of God. We have heard it all the time in all of his teachings that we're getting. There is no teaching that you will get about how you can cleanse your ways and how you can preserve yourself outside of these factors. Prayer, fasting, the word of God. You will not get it any other way because this is the spiritual anecdote. This is the medicine that you need for successful living in this end time. If you're going to cross over successfully, you've got to love the word of God. In addition, hallelujah, we have to learn how to spend time with the Lord. We have to learn how to study the word of God. We have to learn how to get down on our knees and pray and meditate. We have to desire with, with our heart. We have to be hungry for this word. We have to seek this word. This, In other words, don't let anything else become an addiction to you. Let the word of God become an addiction. Let prayer become an addiction and you will see the difference that it makes just like Daniel. Hallelujah. And we had David example as well because David was a great lover of the word and there's so many bible scriptures that talk about David's love for the word of God he said it in Psalm 119 Psalm 119 talks about so much about David's love for, for the word you have to study it you have to study that word it is your wisdom songwriter again my wisdom my knowledge my every understanding is everything to me. That word of God is your wisdom. It's your knowledge and it's your understanding. You need it. Make it everything to you. As an individual, seek after it. David says, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. This is how we have to approach the word of God. This is the attitude we ought to have to the word of God as individuals. Don't let mommy and daddy always be telling you, oh no, just read, just, just go and read your Bible now. 
put away the phone. Mm -mm. Let it not be so. But you search out and you make, make it a love. The Bible says, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. I pray that the Lord will fill you with the love for the word in the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord will fill you with the love for prayer and devotion and fasting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because in this closing days that we are in, young people, you have to make that individual choice to come closer to Christ, to run to him, to let go of everything else that is out there that is dragging you and pulling you like a magnet. You have to learn to break yourself free from it for your soul's sake. For your soul's sake. Hallelujah. Youths, there are many devices out there that is pulling you to the evils of it, and we know the pollutions that are in the world, they're drawing you so much, but you are, don't love them. Don't gravitate to them. Flee from them. Make up your mind that you will stay away from those pollutions. Certain conversation of your friends or those around you, let me not say friends, those, your peers, maybe at school, pollutions, conversation, pollutions. Pull yourself away because your ears cannot hear those. Gravitation to, you know, wanting to be rich and, you know, money ideas fill your head and it may draw you in certain webs that will pollute you and defile you. Stay away. We know about the clothes. We know about the clothes. The ears, ladies, nails, the ladies, ladies, and men, the sagging trousers. Stay away from those pollutions. Stay away from it. Ladies, stay away from the makeups. Stay away from it. You don't need those pollutions. The fakeness, you don't need it. Stay away from it. Generally speaking, young people have trouble dealing with movies and entertainment, social media, and all of these things are greater and traps for young people. But that's why we are pleading today and imploring you, pleading with you, stay away from these defilements and traps that Satan has set up for you. Stay away from the defilement of it and be sanctified in your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Stay away from these defilements and, uh, and, and, and you will be born again. Stay away from it and you will be transformed. Stay away from it. And, and, and cultivate uh, um, a greater depth with the Lord and see how your life will change for the glory of God. The clothes are so demonic today and we know it because we hear it all the time. The clothes are demonic. De demonic spirits are connected to these things and the, sh the clothes are getting shorter and it's causing um, people to be more naked. Stay away from them. They're causing the body to be more revealing. Stay away from these demonic things. Don't desire after them. Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself holy. There's a difference in dress with the church and the world. There is a difference. And you, the holy church, you set the example. Don't go fashioning yourself after the world. You be the example. Sexual immorality is there in the clothes. Lust is there in the clothes. You even put lustful thoughts in your head just by looking at the clothes. Seductiveness is there. All kind of demonic spirits. But when you pray, the Lord will deliver you from these. They will not trouble you when you pray and the more you pray, uh, Satan will not be able to put his grip on you. So that's why we're asking you to cultivate a, a lifestyle of prayer as an individual in this end time, and you will win in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One of the quickest ways to bring people down, to bring young people down, whether consciously or unconsciously, is non-Christian music, young people, youths, 
Mommy Linda preach it she, until she cry. You so go to hell. One of the biggest ways to bring people down and especially young people is through non-Christian music, entertainment and movies, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. You may not know the devastating impacts that it's having on you. You're just thinking you're just listening. You think you're just listening. Ah, it's not just the, the listening. It's the door you have opened for it to come into your spirit. Because tomorrow it's gonna it's gonna cause a, a defilement inside of you, and the evidence is going to come out later because the seed has gone down. You're hearing it. If you don't deal with it, if you don't cast it out. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't um, um, close those doors and, 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 and ask the Lord to cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, it will pollute you. Even if you just walk in a store and just hear the music in the atmosphere. There are many times I go to the stores and I hear the music in the atmosphere of the store. And I have to block my ears from it penetrating. Because if you're not careful, that song that you're hearing for the time that you spend in the store, when you walk out of the store, you're hearing it playing again. And when you go home, it's still playing in your head. So we have to be careful. These things, consciously and unconsciously, they defile us. So we have to be careful how not to let it get into us. Because other, other forces, are entertaining you when you try to listen to these things. When you sit there listening to these things, watching these things, they are entertaining you. It's other forces. It's there to take your crown and your glory away from you. Don't go there. Stay away from these pollutions. Celebrities are out there trying to give you examples of themselves. Don't follow them. Follow the godly patterns, follow the holy preachers, follow Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, follow Timothy, follow Joseph. You have enough character to follow, follow them and not these celebrities of the world. These things, they may look simple and they may seem to be normal. And that's why the tendency is that you may want to follow it because it may seem so simple. Nah, you know, it seems like it's not a big problem until tomorrow you will realize that it is a big problem. The mark of these things are left in your mind. They are left in your mind before you know it. The seeds of these evil songs are, are, are rubbing on you so much that you start to insult. You start to swear because of these evil implantations that have come upon you. Individuality in this end time means that you will reject them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. That is what individuality in this end time means. But do not allow these things to come and pollute you and take you over. Hallelujah. These things, these entertainment things, they brainwash you if you're not careful. Demonic spirits come upon you and turn your godliness into defilement and make the sin look like it is normal. But it's not normal. Sin is sin and cannot be normal. Hallelujah. Our brother mentioned something in his prayer. And uh, it comes from Hebrews. Hebrews. Let's see if I can find it. Hebrews chapter... Let me find it and then I will tell us, hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, verse 16. Do not sell your salvation for a moment's pleasure. Do not sell your sanctification because of um, something that you so desire. In Hebrews 12, verse 16, the Bible tells us, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. What are we talking about? Will you sell your birthright for a one hour movie? Will you sell your birthright for some minutes just sliding on the phone and those minutes become part of you until it becomes an addiction? Will you sell your sanctification? 
Will you sell your holiness for that? Did you see what happened here? Don't let that immediate gratification over possess you and you sell your holiness for it. I pray that will not happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because Esau wanted back uh, his birthright and he could not have it even though he sought it with tears. It was too late. It was lost. It was gone. Let that not happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot promote sin for a moment's pleasure. We cannot. We can't share into it. So all of these things that are coming up on your TikTok and your I don't even know all of these social medias. If I ask my children, they will tell me everything because youths are youths. They know everything like that. But all these things that come up on your phone, you don't have to share them. Because if you share them, you're taking pleasure in them if they're evil. Share that which is good. Share that which is righteous. Share that which is a, a blessing. Share that which will promote your holiness and your salvation. Share that which has a righteous lesson in it. But don't be just sharing, 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 sharing. You're sharing for the devil. Be careful. Hallelujah. Don't sharing it. Don't be a partaker of the devil's um, work and, and, and other people's sin. So we cannot promote these things. It's not normal. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's not let the world make it look normal for us because it's not. That's why it's important that we know the word of God. And we stand on the word of God because Daniel knew the word of God. He knew the law and he knew he cannot defile himself because he knew the law. So please make sure we know the word and we stand on the word. Don't get caught up in these evil jokes and evil chat, everything like that. Mm -mm, you're polluting yourself. Because mm -mm, remember that every idle word and all these jokes and things that we're getting into and just carrying ourselves away like that. We will give an account. So please be very, very careful. Don't let these devices carry us away. Don't let these entertainment and worldly foolish music that Satan has designed for your hell, don't let it carry you there. Break yourself from it as an individual in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't joke over what God hates. Don't joke over it. It's not something to laugh about. It's not fun. It's not pleasure. Don't laugh over these things. Let Satan and his demons go laughter for after themselves. But don't let them set traps for you. Make up your mind. You will not fall in it. May the Lord cleanse your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord deliver you up from the, all the pollutions of this world. Anything that is harassing, tormenting you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when we open these doors, Satan comes through them. What we wear, what we do, what you take pleasure in, the evil that you like, the evil that you desire, these are open doors. But you have to close them from the enemy and save yourself as an individual in this end time. I pray you become an individual. Be an individual in this end time. Do not let the crowd rub on you. Don't let the evil crowd rub on you. Don't let evil friends rub on you. Don't let mean-spirited people rub on you. Don't let wicked men rub on you. Don't let gossip and lies and deception rub on you. Don't let cheating rub on you. Don't let this desire for fame rub on you. Don't let those things come upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will arise and guard your salvation and your sanctification jealously in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be an individual in this end time and you shall win. And you shall overcome. And you shall be victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. This is my word for you tonight. And I pray that there will be something in it that will charge you up and that which will help you and will revive your prayer life, revive your devotional life, revive your, your seeking the word of God, seeking the face of God. I pray something is in here to stir you. Be an individual and purpose in your heart that you will not defile yourself. And heaven shall be yours in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Remember your children tonight, oh God. 
Remember your children in the mighty name of Jesus. We are praying tonight for your children, your daughters and your sons, your precious ones, my Lord, my God, your seed, Father, Lord, your heritage and your reward, Father, your holy ones, Father, that the enemy would want to spoil. Father, I pray that you will protect and preserve them in the name of Jesus. Uh, set a watch over their minds and help them to guard themselves. Uh, Father, Lord, give them the grace and the tenacity in might and spirit, oh God, uh, that they will not uh, pollute themselves, uh, but Lord, they will be dis determined. Uh, they will be resolute loot, my Lord. They will purpose in their heart uh, that they will not sin against you. They will purpose in their heart that they will not defile themselves in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh, King of glory, my Lord and my God, I pray that this word that has been delivered them tonight will impact them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that any powers that are obstructing you, any powers that are, are, are tormenting your life, that the hand of God will destroy it and contend for your soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Any child, any young person that is under the yoke of oppression tonight, uh, we break and cancel the enemy's plan over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere there is stubbornness, uh, anywhere there is rebelliousness, anywhere there is waywardness, uh, that operating power that is trying to take your soul away from God, will be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. The power that wants to disgrace your life, the hand of God will disgrace it for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we take authority over every power of the enemy and we disarm them, manipulating powers, uh, powers that are there to see your downfall. Uh, we come against those powers in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we declare that you are blessed uh, in the name of Jesus. We declare that you are not cursed in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that you will rise up and call your parents blessed. Uh, we pray that heaven will honor you. Uh, and we pray that you will not be the child that will bring shame and disgrace. Uh, but you will be the child uh, that will bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree a blessing upon you. I decree that you are for signs and wonders. I decree that you are a great man and woman of tomorrow. And that today and tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ uh, that you will take charge of your today and you will take charge of your tomorrow. You will not be deceived and you will not be misled because you're taking a stand and you're making up your mind and you're making up in the choice uh, that you will stand for holiness and righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I pray that you will excel in your education. I pray you will not be a school dropout. I pray you will not fail in any of your pursuit in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will excel. I pray that you will excel in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there any disability among you? Uh, I pray that God will help you and God will deliver you in the name of Jesus. Is there a learning difficulty. Whatever is your challenge, the Lord will break that yoke. The Lord will set you free. The Lord will deliver you and you will rise up and you will be excellent at what you do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will be a force to be reckoned with because you stand for holiness just like Daniel in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord settle you all in the name of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. May the Lord settle you in spirit, in soul and in body. May the Lord establish you in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ. We give God all the glory and we give you, Lord, all the praise uh, for breaking the evil powers and the plans uh, of Satan from over your young people and over their mind tonight. Uh, receive all the glory, my Father. Deliver them from the world and cause them to be spotless before you. May your name be glorified in their life and in this youth ministry and over the leaders. Uh, encourage your heart, my Father. Lord, take them from strength to strength. Take them from glory to glory. Father, Lord, enlarge their coast in this North America in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring many more youths in because of the examples of holiness. Uh, because your daughters and your sons uh, are an example. They are vessels of honor. Father Lord, upon them, my Lord, as they stand uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you so much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hurimo is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. 
Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricca, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.